Hey there, welcome back to the channel. Got a new bundle of fun. Got this Slant 6, I have no idea the age. Don't even know much about it other than I was told it ran when it came out. Let's get into it. Next up is the head. Got to get this valve cover off, then we'll take the bolts out, bring it off the top. That looks amazingly clean inside. In fact, That looks like it's been scraped. So, somebody's been into it not terribly long ago. If you're unfamiliar with Slant 6s, almost all of them, except in the very later years, have adjustable valve trains, so all of the rockers, you can adjust the lash. Notice got one long bolt. That's the very rear. This thing is also quite clean inside. I've got high hopes that this head will be in good enough shape to just slap onto the dart. Fair warning, in case it isn't obvious, the six-cylinder head is cast iron, and it's frickin' heavy. I like to rock them back and forth to make sure that that gasket's broken free. It feels like there's a little bit of a ridge in this, but I can't tell if it's carbon or not. All in all, it feels pretty good, though. Certainly seen worse. It's a little strange. That one looks pretty clean. Clean. Super carbon. Filthy. And then clean. And fairly clean. It also looks like these are 40 over already. So, this thing's been rebuilt before. Let's just do a quick inspection of this head while we have it off. It's got this Felpro printer seal on it, which is not factory, so there's another indicator that it's been apart, if we couldn't tell because it had 40 over pistons in it. Some strange erosion right here. Not sure what would cause that. It may have been blowing compression up into the water jacket right there. And that one has got quite a bit of carbon on there too, so it may have been blowing pressure between cylinders there. That one's the biggest concern. I mean, I'm not going to run this motor as is, so I'm not overly concerned about it, but it looks like it probably eroded through this and combustion gases were blowing through it and into the uh, the coolant passage here. Not guaranteed, but I suspect it was. That's probably why the motor was, uh, you know, sitting on the guy's garage floor. So this is another case of those. You know, it ran when I pulled it. If you didn't see it and hear it running, never believe it. And even then, there can be issues. My general thinking is, if you're buying an engine from anybody that you don't know, and 
maybe even from people you do know, it's a core. Always it's a core. Here's that spot where it looked like it was going between cylinders. And then this is where it looks like it was leaking down. Let's get a little closer. So this is that spot where it looked like it was going between cylinders. And it looks even more like it here. And then over here is where it looked like it was getting combustion gas down into this coolant passage. And I still suspect that that's what was happening. I think it was blowing right down through here. So, if we had done a compression test on this before pulling it apart, not that it had been easy to do without a starter or anything on it, but I suspect we would have seen low compression in number two, and then probably also in five and six. This one would have been the worst. This one it was probably bleeding between them. If you did a leak down test, I bet it would uh, it would draw off between those two. A lot of carbon buildup in three. I mean a lot. One's got a lot. It looks like it was running rich. Two, it's a little wet. So maybe valve guides or something. Four is really wet. Five, six. Six looks pretty normal. If you look at that plug on five, it's, I don't know. It's got a little bit of weirdness going on. It's a slant six. I guarantee it was still running. It probably just wasn't running well. Hell, the one in the darts, I think, running on four cylinders, maybe three cylinders. And it still runs and will drive around the block, no problem. The current plan is to take this head and get it to the point that I can put it on the dart and just daily drive the dart. That's going to mean disassembling all the valve train. Then we'll clean up the gasket surfaces. We'll clean up the valves. We'll take a look at the faces and seats. We might lap them, we might not. I'll put in new valve stem seals. I'm not going to do any port work or any blending, nothing up here. Basically, just clean it, rebuild it, put it onto the dart. That's it. The head that comes off the dart, it's probably going to need work. I suspect it has burnt valves. That one, we will maybe take to the machine shop. We'll get into that. We'll see what it needs. But I've got a project for it and for this motor that we're disassembling. That, uh, you know, hopefully will be a little bit of fun this spring. Just as a tip, when you're working on these slant six heads, they really want to tip over to the back. Chunk a two by four. Put that two by four underneath the rocker shaft supports and it becomes real stable. That way you can work on it without it falling over and smashing your fingers. It's quite stable, easy to, to work on. When I just ran down that I was taking a look at the valves. This one and especially this one down here look a little suspicious. You can see how that one's a little bit rounded. But look at this one down here. It's completely rounded off here. And it actually looks like it's got a couple of flat spots. I don't really know what happened here. That's definitely not good though. I'm going to measure it, but I don't know that I would reuse that one. Hopefully the other head has at least, you know, one extra valve in it that's good. Let's start with taking that one out. Well, the stem seal is uh, seen better days. That's the entirety of the seal. 
Yeah, and the, the tip of that valve is mushroomed over. So instead of being completely straight, it's got a little piece that sticks out like this, and it doesn't want to push down through the guide. I've got to use a file or something and smooth that out so I can pull it out without damaging the valve guide. Yeah, let's take a look at that before I file it. Right there. Come on, focus, damn it. See that? So I have to file that off before I can get it out of the head. Okay. You can see that carbon buildup there is due to two things. It's leaking oil down through the valve guide and that, you know, guide seal here isn't preventing that. So it, the guide seal is the first problem, but the guide itself may be worn a little bit. Again, since I don't intend to put a whole ton of miles on it, just a new guide seal will probably take care of the problem for a while. That one came out much easier. It was hard to get it past this seal. I mean, this seal is rock hard. You can see that the valve has some pitting on it. Pretty common for an exhaust valve. We'll take them all apart and take a look. I hate putting that back into a motor, though. I might have to either reface these or buy new ones. I'll just disassemble the rest of this. I'll be back in a bit. All right, I got it apart. Here are the pieces. This is the exhaust uh, stem seal. It's kind of an umbrella. They're all quite hard, but all six of them are there. The intake seals. This is all of the intake seals that I have. You can see this one is mostly, you can see exactly the profile anyway. This is more of a cup that snaps all the way down onto the valve guide. And this is what's left of, I mean, most of them were just completely missing. There's enough pieces here to maybe make two and a half. And those things being destroyed leads to intake valves that look like this. So this was the number four hole. I mean, look at how much oil was in there. It actually poured out when I took the valve out. Number three. That, you know, as you can expect, uh, might affect flow just a little bit. So... The intake is just, you know, getting choked off by all of that. The number two hole was the cleanest one. It wasn't too bad. Number five. Now the exhaust. Here's number one. You can see it's got some pretty good erosion going on there, especially right in through there. It looks like four and five were probably running a little lean and therefore hot. It's in pretty rough shape. I got number five here. If you're going to manually lap that, you're going to be there all day trying to get that clean. Look at the low spot right there. Number six. Doesn't look horrible. Can't tell what that is if that's just some carbon buildup, but... So the valves, 
Well, I'd say they're not in great shape. Again, I don't want to run this for any super long period of time, but boy, I really have a hard time putting it back together with that in there. So we'll price some stuff out. The bigger concern here is these valve seats. Take a look at number one there. Right in through here. I mean, it's super chewed up. You're not going to get much of a seal at all there. Most of the intakes look pretty good. And again, that's actually pretty common. The exhaust valves are the ones that really take a beating. These seats, the reality is, I think all of them look good enough that with a little bit of lapping they'd be fine, except that number one exhaust. It is, uh, it's really hammered. I think that has to be ground. So, I'll figure out, uh, what I'm going to do. I don't have the tools to do that any longer, but I'll see if I can find somebody that does. I doubt I want to pay the price to have a machine shop do it, but we'll make that decision when we come to it. So there we go. Here's the top end taken apart. Still have to take apart the bottom, but I'm not overly concerned about it because I don't intend to reuse it, at least not anytime soon. That's all there is to it. Thanks for watching.